What's up, everybody? This is Rene Rodriguez with the Long Story Longer podcast. This week's guest is Diego Sebastian Martinez, local artist also known as Diego Robot. I'm very excited to have uh, Diego um, on this episode. Uh, get to know the guy. Uh, I briefly met him uh, when we first shot our music video for our first single, uh, Glow, Ryan song with my band One Star Day. We were looking for a, a, a place to, to shoot the music video at. And Adam, our vocalist, Adam Avenue Tellez, he'd reached out uh, through Instagram saying, Hey man, check this space out. I know the dude. Uh, if you like it, I can reach out to him and see if he'll let us uh, shoot our music video there. So sure enough, I loved it. Diego's got an amazing style. Uh, he was gracious enough to let us use that space to shoot our music video at. And I'm very proud of the way that video came out. I think his artwork for sure made our music video a lot more vibrant. Uh, amazing, amazing artist. Um, briefly met Diego there when we were shooting the music video. Uh, he'd come out to see what we were doing and he, he actually shot a video of Ryan performing drums. I think while Ryan was, was jamming out, he was walking around in like a 360 video of him drumming and it posted it to his uh, social media at the time and it came out pretty, pretty cool video. So very thankful he showed that video of my son too, uh, showing off his drumming skills. But, uh, didn't get to meet him in depth. So I'm happy that, that finally he's going to be here this episode. I get to talk to him a little bit more, or a lot more, and I get to know who the dude is, man. So I'm very excited. Very, very, very excited. Um, this podcast this week is brought to you by Annihilate uh, Pest Control, company owned by my buddy Robert Anaya, who I met in high school, and we've been best friends for a long time, too. Um, Annihilate Pest Control. Uh, Robert's who I turn to for all my needs uh, uh, with pest control here at my house uh, from day one when I bought my house, who uh, also Robert's wife, Maribel, helped me uh, purchase. She was my real estate agent, awesome person too. Um, I've had zero issues with cockroaches, zero issues with spiders or any critters. Um, great, reliable service. Robert's always punctual, always uh, Shows up with a great work ethic. So for all your pest control needs, I reach out to Robert Anaya at Annihilate Pest Control. Uh, this podcast is also brought to you by ArtLabCandy.com. ArtLabCandy.com is uh, my buddy Amado Bustos and uh, Alicia Quesada's uh, business. They sell a bunch of original artwork there on cav canvas prints, uh, even stickers. Um, amazing artwork by the two of them also. Uh, so check out the website ArtLabCandy.com. You can also find my drawings that I submitted to Amado uh, about a year ago, just over a year ago. I'd done the Ninja Turtles that I love, of course, as you guys can see around me. Uh, I did a uh, Rat Fink style images of all the four turtles on the turtle van. Um, you could buy the, the stickers individually there, or you can also buy the set of the four stickers as a set called the Turtle Suit uh, set. Clever, clever Amado, I love that still. But uh, yeah, visit Art Lab Candy, see if you like anything there, and um, amazing stuff. I also want to promote um, Yolotli. So Yolotli is our vocalist, Adam uh, Avenue Teas, is a primary band with our producer, Anthony Gonzalez. Um, I've already had the guys on the episodes a couple times, or, or I've had uh, Adam and Drew on one episode, and I've had Anthony on another episode. So... Um, their music's great. Uh, it's it's heavy music, but what's different about this song here, uh, one of their previous songs that they released, uh, uh, Heavy, uh, IWTD, they just released it acoustic, and it sounds amazing. What makes it uh, even even uh, more amazing is it's not just acoustic and sounding great. They've uh, implemented the vocals of their second vocalist that just joined the band, Debris. So yeah, man, check that song out on all streaming platforms, IWTD2. It's on all streaming platforms and on YouTube, so you can check out the, the lyric video on YouTube also. So please like that song, listen to it, comment on it, share it um, over and over and over. That'd be great. Appreciate you guys if you, if you guys do that. Um, again, support local music, uh, local art, and we'll love you for it. So stay tuned in for this episode. It's going to be a great one, I'm sure. Uh, love you guys. Thank you, and peace out. What's up, everybody? This is Rene Rodriguez with the Long Story Longer podcast, and today's guest, Diego Sebastian Martinez, locally known as Diego Robot. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Thanks for making it, brother. I'm glad to have you here. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was excited to have you here, bro, because uh, 
So for those of us, uh, for those of you that have seen our music video for uh, with our band One Star Day, the backdrop for our our, our song uh, Glow Ryan song, that amazing artwork uh, was all Diego Martinez, and um, I don't recall if I ever thanked you that day, bro, for letting us film there or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I didn't, thank you. I appreciate sure, it, man. man. For sure, for sure. Um, I was excited too when uh, you did drop by for a moment there and you recorded Ryan playing drums. You did like a little 360 video of him and posted it to your social media. I appreciate that too, man. Oh, yeah. Now, nah, man, it was cool to see such a, a good father son duo. Thank you, bro. I love, I love, uh, you know, I was just splendidly surprised. And um, here we are. You know, and it's right. like one of those things where it's full circle. You don't expect mm -hmm. it to uh, come back in this way, but I'm glad it did, man. It's really, really fun. Yeah, man. Again, thanks a lot for that. Uh, thanks to uh, Adam, our vocalist, that he had reached out when we we're looking for a, a backdrop. And he's like, dude, check this out. If you like it, I'll reach out to Diego and see if he's cool uh, with us recording there. Did you? Are you in his other band as well? No, no, no. no. Okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not in his other band, but I'm really close to, uh, well... Adam, I've been talking to about music for the longest time, bro. Uh, he would always share his projects with me before the rest of the world heard it, you know, and I was there to support some of his art uh, exhibits or exhibitions also with his photographs. Uh, but I'm, I was very close with him, and even before Adam, I knew their guitarist, uh, who's our producer too, Anthony Gonzalez. Okay. I used to work at Job Semex, the, the rock quarry, and that's where I met Anthony. So I'm, re I'm very close to the band, but uh, not part of that band. I'm not that good, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Adam. I didn't know you were such a lucrative... No, dude. Adam. Item. That's awesome. No, I didn't even know he did photography. I'm sorry, Adam. I, I, know, you, I know you did a lot of... I know you're talented. I know you're multitasked. I just... Man, what a trip. He's blushing right now, bro. The second he hears us, he'll be... <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> but yeah, bro. So, so whenever he showed me the pictures, I was like, that's perfect, man. Yeah, reach out to him. See if he's cool about us recording our music video there and... And thanks to your, your artwork as our backdrop, bro. And then Benny at Paloma Films. That video came together nicely. And your artwork for sure fit the vibe perfectly, bro. So, appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you for that, man. So Hell yeah. Mic drop. Yeah, man. But yeah, he, uh, he, he got back to me. said you were cool with it. So Oh, yeah, man. It was one of those things. Like, if it's going to be for music videos and like just it's super cool just to see it like evolve and have man manifest into something um so the music video is the music art bringing it together local local um talents and yeah man it's, it's a win-win for everybody and you had other people record there too yeah i had a evander Grimm stop by um Bayaso 915 mm -hmm. they're both hip-hop artists um were we the first ones definitely yeah Fuck we yeah. got there before we had a roof yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah. I was, you were, you it was rained on. That too. No, we, we, it had been rained on the, the previous night. Oh, okay. So there were puddles on the floor. So, so it was a cool day for sure. So if every, so if people, like I had a, the last time I had a show was during the time they shot the music video. So that was a while ago. About two years ago. Two I years think. ago. Um, and it, it didn't have a roof until maybe like a week or two before the show, but I was painting um, murals and painting art and so it was like a mixture of paint and water and whatever the universe handed to me as far as uh um weather and and it was a, yeah it was special but i got sunburned and i was you know it wasn't it wasn't easy for most but if i was there every day all day um and in comparison to this show i'm kind of just painting at a i'm just painting i'm not really focusing on murals i'm just focusing on canvases light work for people to take home and uh, I just want to get my pieces out and have fun painting. I'm more focused as far as the painting goes, but I'm um, just not as spread out, I guess. And there's not, yeah, just different vibes. And, and, and that property was right there on the same property as Buddy's Beer Barn. Yeah. Um, that had to have taken a lot of time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, actually, so I had... I only had six weeks to get a show going, so actually it didn't take that long to, to get it painted. I had installations with TVs and everything was just, at that time, that piece lived dope death, it was almost, it was just more about my mental health. Mm -hmm. That show had a lot of um, prescription pills and there was like a dark kind of thematic uh, like lighting. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter's artwork 
during the time that I was separated with my wife, mm-hmm. but everything that she drew for me, I th- I put in the show because it was oh, just right heavy, on. dude. And I was just it was just one of these like all right, I'm gonna fucking let it out. I'm gonna show it to whoever comes and sees it, and whoever's meant to see it sees it. And it was it was healing for me, man. It was just like it was just that time where now it's just like I'm happy. You right, know? That, that's good. Bro. I'm glad yeah. you are, man. So, so I mean, that's crazy that you're implementing everything that you're going through it's a into that. Capsule. But you know when it's time to show it. Like, it, it builds up long enough, and then it's like, all right, this is what it's manifesting to. And it's like, I didn't think of it at the time, though. I'm just having shows, right? Right. Trying to be as vulnerable as possible, or whatever, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And at that time, that was the most vulnerable I've ever been. And it was it was cool. It was, It was... It was what it was, and it happened at the time it happened, and it was meant to be, and I had a giant robot made of fridges. Right. We had a, a fridge you walk through. I mean, it was just like, what the heck? I wanted it, I mean, I just wanted it to be as real as possible, and I wanted it to be, yeah, what it was, I guess, yeah. It's it's, it's real, bro, because the second you walk in there, I mean, you, you notice... Like I said, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of stuff going on on every wall, the bathroom, every which every which place, every nook and cranny. Because even you had uh, stuff pasted on the walls too intricately and all that stuff, and so you could tell it was a labor of love for sure. What I what I like about what you just said. So recently, I've posted on Facebook. I'm not trying to be inspirational or anything, bro. You know, but but on my behalf with music, I, I, I'm always making comments like, I, th- I think for people to really like what you're doing. It has to come from a real place, nothing fake. And you just said it was you were being vulnerable. It was real to you. You're implementing everything that you're going through in the moment. Like 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 my music. I think it's it's making your artwork that much better. Than you know, you're not you're not you're not faking the funk. You can't, bro. No, I've it's been El Paso's too small. Everyone knows each other. You know, it's one of those things that kind of. I'm not hiding. I I have to be... My art has to mean something to me. I mean, everyone has their style. Everyone has their way of of coping. Um, Right. You know, and art for me is like my full-time... My full-time therapy. You know, I don't... I I probably need a shrink, but I I paint. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's it's been like... uh, But, you know, it's... Yeah, you know, it's... I look back at it now, and I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of the pieces. It's a... it's kind of like every show from like I've been painting for probably like over 12, 13 years, maybe 15, mm-hmm. give or take, right? And there was a time where I was doing like 100 shows a year. Wow. Like just every weekend having, you know, just being out trying to sell shirts and trying to like make my rent. And, and it's still the same, but it's just a little bit like you build a flow. I'm doing more digital work. Like things just mm-hmm. change. Like you're focused more on like right now I'm just painting and uh, having like a space to go to right now has mm-hmm. been really fun again but i'm still as productive so i've realized you can paint anywhere you mm-hmm. can if you're the artist you take your craft with you you have enough yeah you, you can paint anywhere so um in, instead of having like this like crazy rent at a studio right now i'm just painting at my house and i'm painting more i'm mm-hmm. um, seeing my kids more and i'm not like dedicated to how do i bring people here and how am i going to build little ecosystem where I'm at so everyone eats it's like it's just a little slower it's a little less it's a lot slower pace and Mm -hmm. it's less stressful I don't have this burden of of trying to carry on too much and I'm not as burned out good bro and I think that's the difference this show it's just really it's really all coming out good it's having fun it's just clear and that and I like it I like it a lot more (laughs) So you're pretty much the perfect example how I'm, I'm the saying how if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Can you relate to that saying or? If you're an artist, you're going to work your ass off. For sure. Cause it's... And you're fucked. <laughs> Don't be an artist, dude. I have everyone, everyone that tells me, dude, should I be an artist? And I always tell them, no, man. Don't become an artist. Unless you can take that. Mm-hmm. And if, you're te- if I'm telling you don't be an artist and you're like, fuck this motherfucker, I'm going to paint more. Mm-hmm. Then you're the artist. That's you. Good. But you have to, like, everyone, because you know what? Everyone's going to tell you, don't, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Even me. <laughs> and I've been yeah. doing it, but I'm like, dude, it's, it's never going to end. It takes, like, 50 years to get known, and it's like, you're going to have to promote yourself. You're going to mm-hmm. be your own. You're going to have to have your website going. You're going to have to 
You can document you gotta stay, your YouTube channel. You, you, you got to stay active. You got to stay active. on top of your, your own game. Well, I mean, no one wants to follow someone that paints once a year. It's like... Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to overpost too. You know? It's yeah, like yeah. this balance. It's But no, I mean, there's no right or wrong way. If you're an artist, you're an artist. And if you love to do it, if you're active or you're not, it's still in you. And I'm not here to tell you anything, you know. But but it, it is hard. Super hard. Right, right, right. Even with a few little handouts, it's freaking hard. I don't even, th I don't even know if there's such a thing. But um, it, it does have to be a passion for you if, if you want to do it full time. Mm -hmm. and, and if you dedicate, if it's, yeah, man. But for me, it's like, I want to... How Marcus, you know, Sam, I don't talk about Sam Gaithan enough, actually. So Sam Gaithan has been a huge, huge uh, reason why. I've never talked about an interview. Sam, this is your time. I've been telling you this for a long time. He should be honored. <laughs> I love you, and thank you for your friendship. Um, Sam has was writing for the El Paso Times during the Lincoln Show. And so D. Garcia, another artist here in El Paso, real name Diego as well. Um... I don't know. I had his piece in the show and he got Sam over and Sam ended up starting to write articles for us, for the galleries. Went to Casa Ortiz and he gave us like a front page article every Friday to talk about our shows. It was, it was just magical. And then even till this day that he wrote an article that came out yesterday and he's always kind of followed me and helped me every month with buying artwork, mm -hmm. like whenever you needed it, kind of like, whew. There's a few hundred bucks, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, no, and it's crazy how, how much he supports me. Even, like, he went with me to Old Shoot, bought me tacos and a beer, and then still bought a little painting. And I'm just like, bro, like, <laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? Are you okay? I feel like, it, I almost feel, so, yeah, it's so freaking nice to have people that. That we, support it. Support it, yeah, and you're just like, dude, man, like, you could just, and you just, when you realize that everything that you do is based on, some sort of gratitude or some kind of like because it's like times are tough right gas is high you know bills are high except for you know except for minimum wage right but everything's going getting higher except for minimum wage so it's a blessing when someone buys a painting because mm -hmm. it's it's all luxury man mm -hmm. it doesn't really have to be bought and so so i'm always trying to just i'm trying to be more you know live with gratitude I'm trying to just attract that a little more um, because, you know, as an artist, if you're going to make it, you do rely on the community and you do rely on, you know, making those connections and, and having your work and, you know, displayed in different businesses. It's it's really up to you to get it there. Mm -hmm. But if you have people that are willing to help you, then you just take every help you can get. You always say right. yes. Just always say yes. Always take the help. That's great, man. Um, I think uh, how you're talking about you, you're doing it full time. Like, like I commend you for that, bro. Because um, you stuck with it. You're, you're you're doing it on a daily basis. Um, was there ever a point in your life where where you reconsidered putting art on the back burner and seeking out other other means of making finances, or was was art where you were all in? Man. So, because <laughs> I'm sure there were there were probably moments in so there were moments for sure. Yeah, like, I was like, all right, I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna be thirty get pretty deep, soon. Bro. Right, I'm gonna be thirty pretty soon. I'm, am I still gonna be the fucking robot guy? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But then right. I'm like, hell yeah, you know. Yeah. I, it was really now it's like, yeah, no one's gonna hire me because I'm an artist now. They're like. They can't, I mean, it's, it's just my job. Now. Right, right, right. So right. I've accepted it. But if I'm going to eat, if I'm going to have, I have to be all in for sure. Because how am I going to eat? How yeah. am I going to, how am I going to put gas in my Otherwise, body? yeah. So the only way I was really going to succeed as an artist, if I was going to be an artist, was I'm going to have to be a full-time artist. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to get it all out. And how the hell am I going to do this? Well, social media is free. You know, I mean, you can buy Instagram ads and it helps for sure. But for the most part, you know, there's different platforms that I use like Object, um, Hug XYZ. I'm in like One Love Art Gal community where they just, we network on digital artwork and they display mm -hmm. it like in different cities all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Deso. This is all social media, by the way. Mm -hmm. Deso is desocialworld.com. It's, uh, it's another way to get your art out. I'm also on just it's all my link tree I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just always getting it out 
I'm always mm-hmm. creating. I don't know what's wrong with me sometimes, I think. You know, you know there was there was a time where I was like, now nah, you know there wasn't a time that I really, really was like, I'm going to stop because I always figure out, I always was just thinking about a way to continue, I guess. Right, right, right. And even when my wife or my family was like, dude, you need, you have, like, you went to school to be a teacher, but you don't want to be a teacher. Like, what, are you okay? I was just not going to hear it. I was going to be an artist. And because I saw, I saw whatever, I saw like the spark I needed. You know, I saw it trigger people to be happy. And so it made me happy. And that's what I wanted to do. And, and when you, that's when you realize when you can tell, when someone's going to tell you don't do it. And I'm telling you, it's everyone is going to tell you don't do it. If you can still take it and then you still want to do it, then you're an artist. Plain, plain. But you have to, like, for me, it's like, I, I want to live on this shit. Right, right, I want, right. Like, I want to struggle. I want to fucking have that anxiety. I fucking, you live for that shit. Right. And it's also the scariest, but it's also, I like, that's, I'm not a thrill seeker. I'm pretty, I'm sh- too short to throw down. Like, I'm pretty, <laughs> I try to lay, I try to get away if, you know, if people don't like me. So, it's not, but th- this is like the one little thing. I'm like a little, like a little happy, just little chipmunk, dude, dude. I don't know. Dude, well, well, well. I love painting, man. You're happy doing it, but you're also ballsy. And the reason I ask is because I'm a creative too. Yeah. But I'm a creative on on my terms, like like I I, I got to do it when I when I'm in the mood. I'm gonna draw when I'm in the mood. I can't do it as often as you can. And even people look at my stuff and they, they tell me more often than not, you're in the wrong business. But I think with me, I don't have the balls that you do. You know, like like I I can't. I'd be afraid of making art my full time thing. It's because it it's inconsistent. Right. It's very inconsistent. But you have you have a lot to hold down. Mm-hmm. You know, I do have I do have a su- little supporting cast for sure, mm-hmm. and it's I guess it just works out. But you have a you have you you have a an opportunity mm-hmm. always, to yeah, draw, or to do something to take time. You have a week off, week on, pretty soon. Uh, pretty soon, that's the the plan. So that's that's the plan. Stick to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's building the habit of being in love with your with the process so for me it's like the process of painting is more fun than the show the actual work and the the grind of it is more fun than the show the show is kind of like the party where you have to break out of your mental your um, barriers barriers yeah you just have to be like you have to be carefree and people are going to come see the show see you and i don't know what people are going to say but it doesn't matter because they're there to see you and mm-hmm. more than likely they're going to like the work because they're not going to waste their time going to some show mm-hmm. they're not going to like um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, that's, that kind of scares me still actually. It's kind of right. funny, but I, I have a hard time <laughs> with people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm going to actually be present. This last, at Peace, Love, Dope, Death, I think I was hidden half the show. I was like in the back scenes. I didn't want to see anybody, but this show, I'm going to be present. I'm going to be there. But are, are, are you hidden? Cause you're. I was just in a weird <laughs> funk, man. I was just like, who am I? I don't like, blah, 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 blah. I was just. At that time, I was going through, like, some hardships as far as, like, losing some friendships mm-hmm. in a weird way. And, like, you, you break a com- camaraderie, like, Casa Ortiz, and it was, I was devastated, you know, leaving Socorro. Like, everyone remembered me from, hey, you're the guy at Socorro, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I loved it. Um, but for every reason, every every little down, there's an up. And so, it is what it is. You kind of just, you appreciate it now more, painting on, on the mission trail and the... 1800 right. store. I, I'll never be able to do that. Maybe, maybe not. But at that time, every day having that place to go to, it was a dream come true. And they're telling me, go get a job. I'm like, I'm going to go to the studio. <laughs> Fuck this. I Good, always had man. a full spot to paint. And then right. now that I'm finally painting at home, they're finally like, all right, cool. You're, you're, you're doing, you're making, you're, you're gain, you make some cash here and there, like whatever. Not that right. it matters, but it does help. You know. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I also like to do drops. I like to give. I I don't I I, I know my demographic, man. So so how excited do people get when you do those drops, man? Do you do you get a lot of feedback from that or? I love it. It well, you know, it's, dude, yeah. Cause, cause what what, so. what what Diego does is he'll pick a location, he'll post on social media. He's gonna leave a piece there, and people go find it and keep it for. Yeah, yeah, just it's a, yeah. Then, so I I used to try to do it like. Every time I sold a piece, I'd give a piece away. Mm-hmm. But nah, it's just not right now. I gotta be like, I gotta do the number. I gotta have a show. Like, there's just different patterns. There was, there was a time where I did 23 drops in a day. I right. Mean, it's just like I don't know what the hell, driving all over town. 
I don't know what drives this, dude. No. I mean, at that time, I wasn't taking my meds, so <laughs> I was a little <laughs> mentally unstable, I guess. But, you know, it just, it translates who you are, man, and it's just part of you, and sometimes I don't even know why I do half the shit I do. At that time, it was a lot more like, what the fuck, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. you're random. But it felt good. And it's it's brought me here. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty trippy, man. It, I, I can't, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a free spirited method to your madness. I'm assuming a free spirited meth head. To my no, no madness. method. No. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. But 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 also so so whenever you've got your your exhibitions or your shows, um, how are you about taking them? The compliments when people look at your stuff and thanks approach you and I just think <laughs> thank you. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll. Yeah, I'm going to try not to drink. Do you get awkward, though, or... Nah. Nah? I'm getting awkward now. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm getting... This is how I am, actually, when someone's asking me. This is, like, how I am right now? Yeah. I guess I'm a little awkward. No, no, but but, 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 but legit, bro, um... No, nah, it's cool. It's... the con- You know, I, I, it's hard for me. It's... Just, I don't look at myself as this... I just... I, I see myself blessed that I've been able to do this for sure, but I don't... Oh, dude, it's so hard for me to, like... When people like, it's so hard for me to think of myself as. I just see everyone like I feel like, dang, I'm trying to live up to everyone else. Even if you're like anything, I'm like, dang, bro, you got a, you got a consistent job. <laughs> like everyone's my dream hero. Right. So I'm like, dude, I'm just, yeah, it's um, it's harder than, it is. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah, man, it's a trip. So it's cool. Yeah, I think it is a little trippy, but it's not all the time. But when it does happen, it's cool. And I'm asking because, like, like for instance, with with the music that I've dropped, uh, I love feedback, but I do get awkward too. Yeah. But I, but I do want to hear what people think about the music, you know. And, and I want to legit hear a po- uh, not not a positive, but a an honest statement. Oh, I like the song, but or you know what I mean? No, I don't uh, like honesty too much. No. I'm no, I I, I, prefer, <laughs> I prefer. Their face will save to me. Like oh, I yeah. can tell people like they're just be like, like you'll know when they don't like it. And you're like thanks. But, but they won't talk to you, so you're good. No, it's usually compliments. Compliments are good, man. You, they definitely, um, you know, everything with the ego, you got to take as as, uh, as it comes, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's all, it's all just, it's it's like like I said, the process, painting, and the that's the fun part. Yeah, right. but the the people's is, you know, that's that's what's gonna come in. That's what wants to see the show. That's like the little mm-hmm. ecosystem. That's what's gonna, you know, have people create. So every person that goes in there is creating a moment, and you have to look at it like. You just have to change your mindset as, mm-hmm. man, they're there to take maybe a piece home of this mm-hmm. moment with that they're having of this art crawl or whatever, if they go the first. Um, and you're just creating moments for people. And, and it's not really about you at the end of the day. It's really just about putting it out there and letting, you know, I, I really just want have people have a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, the me part and all that is like, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be there. This time. I'm going to yeah. be there this time, but it's kind of like. Yeah, it isn't. It's it's really hard for me to really just see myself like that. Still, I'm just a robot, dude. I just, you know, just painting all the and, time. And clearly, because uh, we we've got mutual friends, bro. And, and what I've heard from everybody, for the most part, is you're you're pretty humble, and and I think that's where your your art is as prominent as as it is too. You know, because people like you, bro. So. Oh, dude. You know, well, it hasn't. I guess when there's points in my life where people didn't like me, and so mm-hmm. you just learn to like not be. You learn from yourself. Mm-hmm. And you grow and so you know i'm not perfect and so there's no, but, 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 but how many of us are bro we yeah. all learn from our past mistakes yeah none of us are perfect but you know i'm happy with who i am and i think that's what projects to people mm-hmm. like, like you're if you're comfortable with who you are you're happy whatever if you're you know pe- you will people will see that um yeah I and wish you, and everyone will and you gotta keep those positive people around you bro that's why i got this dude here yeah no, adrian yeah. <laughs> now yeah you you know it's it's yeah. See, that was how I take compliments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I take compliments. Everyone, that's how I take compliments. I'll just throw it back at you. No, you're cool, with bro. But 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 I'm sure. Uh, do you ever get uh, not feedback? But do you ever get like somebody buys a piece of yours, and then do they ever send you pictures of where they mounted the piece or whatever? And do you get a satisfaction yeah. in that? And... You know, it's funnier. You remember the one time that someone sends a picture of you when it was at Savers. Mm. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Those are the better ones. Hey, bro, I just got this fucking piece for 15 bucks. Like, oh shit! You've seen that? You've seen it in? <laughs> I've seen it at a at a 
I've seen it at a thrift shop in Juarez. Oh wow! I mean, it's just you see your art. It's just are you? I mean, I've seen the art. I've seen my art in a dumpster in front of me because they were mad. Oh fuck! I mean, it's just art's been so. It's been everything to me. <laughs> but you, yeah, you do get those. Oh, I love my piece. Yeah, and then you get the piece that you walk into and like they're like eighteen pieces in, and it's like holy macaroni. Right. Like, this, 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 and this part of my life. And, there was a time where I was so bad at signing paintings, I had to go to my friend Debbie's house who had like eight paintings I didn't sign. Oh, wow. <laughs> just, so it's just weird, man. It's so weird. That's a trip, bro. And, and then so earlier when you were talking about uh, um, where we shot the music video, how you are going through uh, a darker time in your life and it was reflective in the, the, the images there. How many phases have you gone through as far as your art? Do you, are, are you on a different phase right now where that, that's representing your artwork right now? or? Yeah, I would say this. So everything that I painted for that piece of Dope Death show was a found object. Mm -hmm. Or it was all recycled. It was fridges. Mm -hmm. It was in, It was just really... I would go to um, recycle sites every week. Maybe twice a week. Certain days. Um, and just get paint. Like, mm -hmm. the free paint, and I would just, that's what I used, because I was falling on the budget always, right? Um, but at that time, that's how I had, that's how I was going to make it work in six weeks, and I had to, like, just produce all this work, and, well, now it seems like I'm doing this show in four weeks, I have more pieces, but I'm trying to do, I'm doing less with, but I'm painting more with my time, but I'm, I'm working less, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're working less, and is there pieces that you've painted ahead of time for this show, too, that you're like, you know what? This one's not going to make it to the show. Or are you pretty much putting everything in the forefront? So I'm just continuing to buy canvases. That way I don't think about painting over them. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few that I've gone over, but not crazy. Um, this this show is more focused on just like female. I don't know. It's just expression. It's, uh, it's brighter. It's definitely brighter. I'm thinking happy. So mm -hmm. everything, I'm Good, going, man. everything I'm going in is just like, let's do happy vibes. And, and that's the difference because peace, love, dope, death, you throw that out there, you attract that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you project that. And so for the peace, I had the peace, you know, everything was peaceful. Everything was love. I did a lot of dope. XJ, AKA, yeah. I smoked weed. <laughs> you know, you go into your like, even dope for me at that show was prescription pills. And you get into like mental health, even, mm -hmm. you know, accepting certain, I have anxiety or blah, blah, blah. You know, and so that was like the dope thing. Like, I always felt doped up. Like, I always mm -hmm. felt numb. And then the death was, you know, when when the, when the I had to leave this estate because the guy into guardianship and buddies had a stroke. And, man, that was like the death to me. Like right. Losing that part of that camaraderie. You know, we all lost a lot that day. So I'm like, you know what? You, It's powerful what you do. Everything you do, everything you project will come back to you in a weird way. So... I was like, nah, dude, I want to do something happy, rich. Right. Man <laughs> manifest. Go space. Our yeah. shows, you know what I mean? No, yeah. sorry, that was loud. But yeah, yeah. dude. Um, no, not that. I just want to be happy. I just want to project that. I want to attract that. I want to slow my life down, man. It's really all I want to do. And that's what the show's about. Just being in peace. And the show is, the show, actually, I'm doing like a lot of figures and women. Picasso mm -hmm. vibes, for sure. Right, 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 right. And so whenever, let's say you wake up today, you're going to start uh, uh, doing your craft, uh, how do you get in the mood or how do you set yourself up or what's your what's your routine? Do you put music on or So no music ironically. I used to, but oh, not, wow. not anymore. So actually yeah, sometimes. I've been hearing that Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. stuff. But um I wake up early, take the kids to school or and by eight to like six I'm just like mm -hmm. really dedicated to like using the sun to dry every layer and then so all the canvases are pretty much like if they're small pieces, I'll try to layer them on the mm -hmm. on the floor or on the easel, kind of like I showed right. you that video, right? Um, and then with one color for the five, I'll go with how many I'm doing. So if it's 34 like yesterday <laughs> or five or whatever, they're all going to get the same amount of, of color to mm -hmm. each of them. And then it's just like you do the process. And then the hard part yesterday was just getting the detail. I bought markers for the first mm -hmm. time in a long time, so I was doing like the post goods. Mm -hmm. Took a little longer. I wasn't able to do the thirty-four. Bit. I finished three. I got mm -hmm. thirty-one clothes, but I still have to. I still have to. You know, they're not going to paint themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what gets my ass going. I'm like, fuck, dude, I got to show. But the show is what drives me, dude. Like, I, who the hell's going to do thirty-four paintings? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing normal about that. I hope you know. I know this, <laughs> and I've been with artists, and they tell me I'm fucking crazy, and I know I am. 
I know, but I'm going to use that shit to my advantage. I mean, I'm just going to do it. That's just me. Right. I don't know why I'm so loco. <laughs> and, 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 and do you go in with a... Uh... With something uh, premeditated as to what you're gonna paint, or is it pretty much all freelance? Some of it is some free spirited. It, free spirited. So the so this flow's just been really like cutty and shapey and eyes and it's kind of like how I do when I was a little kid, kind of. <laughs> but just uh, I just now. Or do you just tap into the vibes that the universe is throwing at you and take it from there? I just or? go. Good, I just go, man. man. So I'll, the first thing I do is like I'll get like a watered down like yellow or something, and I'll cover them all up cover mm -hmm. up the white let them all dry and then i have an idea i have my go-to's i have my skull i have my astronaut i have my mm -hmm. my robot couple whatever if i need mm -hmm. a few of those i could do them and then i'll do like an el paso i'll do an el paso theme piece because those the every the the sister cities does pretty well bam beat hand the glass you know what i mean it's just like dude it's like i've done so many pieces but there's just different or you can even go like like i've been i've been messing with transparent paint and but this flow is just like, it's not, it's, it's just so, yeah, there's never ending. Nah, mm -hmm. dude, I don't have a hard time finding shit to paint. I'm just like, <laughs> let's fucking paint it, dude. My, my problem is I need more shit to paint, dude. Right on. I need to get this shit out of my head, dude. And so when you're not painting, how do you find yourself uh, spending time? Tablet. <laughs> Same. Inside digital work. Yep. I don't even have a pen. I'm drawing my finger, you know. So, like so, so I, I bought the Apple Pencil for my, for my iPad too, bro, and I never used it. I just, I just couldn't Can I get it? into it. The Apple Pencil, I just couldn't get into it, and I gave it to my nephew. I never used it again, and I'm just using my finger because I just got used to doing my finger. Oh, I would have bought it, bro, right now. <sighs> I don't need an Apple. Oh, oh, you would have bought it. Dude, my, my thing's all messed up. I had, like, I think I chewed it too many. I don't know. My oh, daughter right. chewed it. I don't know what the hell. It's been thrown. My dogs chewed it. It was like, it's, it, it's got all the cool intricacies where you could, like, tilt it and shade or whatever the fuck, but it's like, I just couldn't get Yo, into it, man. My tablet's so cracked. I got like screens on screens and mm -hmm. just cracked oh, stuff, wow. and I'm just like making it work. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's just they're so expensive. Right? I couldn't afford another one right now. Oh, they're, they're about to come out with a 13 inch one, and I'm like, and Man. it's all like cool back. I'm like, thank God. If I do that one, it's gonna be way cooler than this piece of shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh man, that's what's up. Yeah, when I got that tablet, it was um, it was during a time where I needed something to keep me going, but I didn't know it was gonna make such a I didn't know it was gonna make such a difference in the NFT world. I mm -hmm. think like I, I've just been I do like more NFTs than I do painting sometimes because I'll do I'll turn each painting into like fucking ten different NFTs. So are, are, are NFTs still prominent or no? no? Oh yeah, some some like there's ordinals which is a Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin's always gonna be up, you know what I mean? And there's different projects like I follow so bad, and there's different people doing it. Diso's more they're gonna launch this um, Focus X Y Z. And that's going to be an AI incorporated social network. Um, work. Yeah, there's just there's just so many places that, as a creator, they're looking for you. I even just got like a, I just got an award. I got uh, recognized on Revel XYZ. They gave me 500 bucks last month just for using the app. Oh, right. They needed artists like me. They wanted me to just share it. Um, I'm doing a drop with REMX, uh, XYZ. It's Remix. Mike. Montgomery, he's the CEO. He reached out to me about doing a, a drop, so I just turned that in. And then, you know, there's times where, like, I got messaged by the embassy to go to Honduras. And I oh, go wow. Because I didn't know Spanish that well. Like, <laughs> I need to be fluent. But they wanted me to go to um, Honduras for 14 days. And, I, you know, so it's just random. I don't know how the hell they get my emails. I'm like, am I on a system? But there's been opportunity. Like, yeah, wow. Just, life's a trip, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, you just never know. Like, virtual. Yeah, dude, I don't know. And as an artist, bro, you just mentioned AI. Does that scare you or nah? Nah, dude, because I'm, no not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to that shit at all, bro. Oh, you know what? It's, you know, I'm AI, all that. Military, I'm not trying to think about it. But as far as the artwork, there's AI. It doesn't, there's, um, it's really hard for AI to sell. So mm -hmm. people will take it. Because anybody can do it. Yeah, hand-drawn artwork is less hard to find. So you have a better chance of selling it. So it actually helps you. But even then now, like, people are doing album covers using AI art, too, and it's, like, it's taking away jobs from artists, you know, and that's... You're just not good enough artists. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, well, well even then, I mean, our, our artists objective, whatever, but even then, it's, it's, it's fucking, to me, like, like, even with music where I was watching, uh, I seen them on YouTube myself, too, but I, I was watching another, on another podcast, they type in a topic, write a song about this, and within a couple of seconds, there's a whole song in whatever style they chose singing about whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's... It's... 
There, okay, so there's an easy way to do things, and that's always going to be a factor in everything. But there's also this genuine, you as an artist can be your, your own storyteller. And you can, you're, you're ultimately in control of your destiny. So the, just you just can't let anything stop you either way. Right, right, is exactly. Is. You, if there's AI, you use that shit too. Fucking use AI, dude. Use it. I, 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 use it all the time and then help it draw help it help you draw help it make mm -hmm. come up with ideas using it use that shit too but for instance with, with, with like music if, if you're having a hard time writing lyrics and you ask this fucking piece of software to come up with the lyrics for you do it don't tell anyone oh, I couldn't do that bro <laughs> I mean you know that's but that's, but, but, but that's where we're hitting yeah. you know that's, that, that's where it's going how, how much of the shit that we listen to later is gonna be AI based not, not so much AI based but influenced or see that for me is like yeah rights for music um I know there's companies selling, buying rights from the artists now, mm -hmm. like, so that they can use their voices and stuff. Mm -hmm. and just own your, own your stuff, make sure that you price it high, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and just own yourself. As an artist, if you're big enough and you have enough people that want your money, then they mm -hmm. already know this, but just know your worth. Ultimately, you're, you own your own, sh so before you give it away, because mm -hmm. you think you should just just enjoy yeah. it. Build it up. It takes a long time to get known, you know? Mm -hmm. Own that shit. But, yeah. like, First Light, um, they reached out to me, and they actually leased my robot for their bank mm -hmm. every year. So that's been cool. That's been, like, my first partnership in that sense. So, yeah, you just make sure that you have, like, you own that shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just, uh, it just scares me, but, like, we were talking about, uh, about art being real to you, you know, earlier. It's just, that's where the AI takes that away from anybody. That's what I'm not looking forward to. I don't like. I don't even want to dabble with it. For me, it's it. like, who? What the hell is the military doing with this AI? And that's exactly, what's scary. Like, all that creative shit, you know, it's there. I use people are using it to write their doctorate degree right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's it is taken away, dude. But it's too it's too here. This yeah. And what, what what's crazy is in Terminator its, in its infancy. It's it's doing amazing things. Imagine a year from now, how much better it's gonna be. Well, they're saying that AI is going to end up becoming smarter than us. Ruling the country. And then just fucking um, taking over and fucking shutting us all down, dude. Aw, oh, bro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not looking forward to that, bro. Elon is going to be the... He's doing Starlink right now, bro. And they're just learning how to use your mind controlling. Mm -hmm. like, it's a trip, bro. It's, that's the trippy stuff that I'm like... It, it's borderline ethical, but... It's going to be a point where it's just the common. Well, I, 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 I think it'll have its, its advantages where they're saying that they might be able to find cures for whatever medical condition yeah. using AI. So I think that's uh, very it's beneficial. Gonna, it's also going to be systematic control, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's the, that's that's what I'm thinking that's about. That's Elysium. Did you ever see that movie? <laughs> that's what, like, that's the, like, you see Gattaca mm -hmm. and shit. You're just yeah. like, all right, what, what's going on with the chips? What's going on with their... <laughs> It's weird, man, and they're always telling me, if you want to know the future, just watch movies. You watch The Simpsons. You start watching them. You're it's it's them all the precursors to everything, bro. Like, no, man. It's like, dude. But ultimately, bro, we're here for a fucking short time, regardless. No one's going to make it out here alive. Let's fucking have some fun, bro. Make the best of it, man. Yeah, uh, man, there's so much shit that we, we have no control. I want to lay low. I'm not, I just want to fucking man, do my thing. And you know, um, we're here for a short time, but I think, I don't know what it is with, with, with age, me getting older, I feel like... There has to be something beyond this lifetime, bro. Oh, dude. Like, Definitely. This is this is one chapter. This lifetime is one chapter of something bigger than what we can comprehend at the moment. Well, if, I think. I feel like there's there's got to be something that keeps us going, man. Um, for me, like the eternal life, knowing mm -hmm. like I'll see my family when it's all, you know. There's this. Everyone wants to think of whatever they want. There's people that don't think anything's gonna happen. There's. People that find joy in believing in the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. insect, I don't know, dude, there's all kinds of shit, right? But, dude, there has, there, for me, it's like, there's a connection, it's, there's too much going on around us, there's a life, a universe, right, happening around us that we can't see, there's, mm -hmm. God is real, the universe is real, things that you give out come back to you, that, I mean, there's just there's something controlling us, for sure, in my opinion, for mm -hmm. sure, man. Just try to try to put that, yeah, and then you appreciate, like, you're getting older and you appreciate the youth. You see how being young was so special, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then you just try to take, you see the transitions of your parents getting older, and it's just like a, it's just, you know, it's a trip. Mm -hmm. We just can't tap into it at the moment, not this lifetime. 
man, I'm I'm just always like, I know I'm just not gonna be here forever, and so I'm always just trying to work and just stay busy. But yeah, if I think about it too much, it's a little. I used to get super scared, like, oh my god, what the heck's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. But that happens where we go. It was super scary, and I was scared of aliens for. I mean, it's just oh, there's dude. been episodes of just trauma and shit. <laughs> But we just yeah you control what you can. Have you ever seen anything that might be alien or that you can think of? Or? Sure. I think I'm an alien too sometimes, but then <laughs> I'm like, nah, I don't have any superpowers. <laughs> I'm short like an alien. That's about it. But nah, man, there's a nah. I I want to say yes, dude, but no. I think it was probably the star in the mountain or something. Mm-hmm. But I believe in that shit. Oh, for real, for I sure. Think you're, I think Adrian's an alien, or someone's living around this fucking. Yeah, they're like. Oh, dude. Yeah, they're out there. I just I, I can't I can't focus on anything but artwork. Dude. Like, yeah, I'm like the last person to see anything. So if there's an alien around me, I'm just gonna be like whatever. I try not to look at people. What's up, man? And just keep on like, Fuck that! I don't care. If you are an alien, cool man. Just don't fucking shoot me. Yeah, don't shoot me. Don't don't, pro- don't probe me, bro. Don't. And if you probe me, <laughs> fucking buy me a sandwich first. Take care of this long bro. Help me out. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think there's a lot out there that we can't comprehend. That uh, it'll come to light maybe during our lifetime, maybe not. We'll we'll see, man. They're here, bro. Elon's yeah, alien. yeah, yeah. I think they're here for sure. Elon's alien. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm or a robot, cyborgs. One You're fucking two. tapped in right now, dude. They, you mm-hmm. have an on and off button. No, I'm we live on Fort Bliss, bro. We're gonna, they're just gonna start lining us up and chipping us all, dude, mm-hmm. like dogs. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, bro. <laughs> and then uh, anyways, anyway. So you, so you being a dad, you've got how many kids? Two. Two. Do they take after you with with artwork too, or? My youngest. Your so youngest. It's funny. Just like, I was, she was like, what? So every time I take her a snack from school, she's like, okay, okay. dad, I love you. I'm going to draw you something. So I'm like, cool. She's like, what do you want? So I was just thinking something that I draw. So I was like, oh, just do like a son with a happy face or something. Right. She's like, no, dad, that's too easy. I'm going to draw you Sonic. The hedgehog. Right on. <laughs> just like, what the? And she draws him, dude, and it's like legit. Right. Like, looks like Sonic. She gets on the YouTube and she does how to draw. She's six. Right. She's going to be six. And so she's drawing, 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 drawing. Drawing on her walls, like, drawing on herself, putting tattoos on herself. <laughs> she wants to have 12 kids and she wants to be a teacher. I'm like, what the? You know, trippy, dude. She's trippy little, has her own personality, but loves to draw. Always drawing, for sure. My young, my oldest is... Always like, I don't have the drawing gene, but well, okay. yeah, she's cool. She's just more into like makeup and mm-hmm. she wants to be rich. <laughs> she's right. more about like, what can I do to get rich? Like, I want to be a psychiatrist. Oh. And then my youngest is like, I want to have 12 kids on beauty. They're just so different, dude. I'm just like, I don't know. But yeah. she, but the youngest one is tapping into the artwork and do you have uh, some of her pieces hung up in your house or? Yeah. She, yeah. They're all over the fridge. If she, do. My wife threw one away, and she was freaking, dude, so yeah, they're just everywhere, man. She's, they're all, she, she has notebooks just drawing, dude. Yeah, yeah for sure. Alana. Yeah, my son's got some, too. Uh, they're not in front of the fridge right now, but they're on top of the fridge at the moment. But he's always drawing stuff, too. Hell yeah. So he's got the the art bug for me, too, the music bug, and I think he's going to surpass me for sure. I'm like, damn, she, so. my daughter's got the anxiety twitch. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to, she's... She's cool, man. She's definitely um, highly sensitive, and she has her ups and downs. Like she has her rough. But well, she she's a good kid, man. So yeah, um, yeah. You just see, you start seeing yourself, and and then when it's a little scary. And so from our our, our conversation earlier, before we started uh, recording, bro, uh, you're into sports. Yeah. It, it, it's not that often you come across an artist that will admit that, man. With the pain you know? and into sports. Yeah, man. Dude, I, I love I love the WNBA. I love the Chicago Sky is my favorite team. Angel Reese. I love Caitlin Clark. I'm into um, UConn basketball. My favorite college team is UC, USC. Mm-hmm. Juju Watson. Mm-hmm. Um, big Cowboy fan. Uh, big Laker fan. Big boxing fan. Mm-hmm. I love Terrence Crawford. And uh, he's my favorite fighter. But yeah, I'm always just... 
I love, I love, I love all that stuff. Yeah, big Cowboys fan. You're saying uh, I did see a picture of you on your social media with a Cowboys jersey. I was like, come on, man. Oh, dude. You know, <laughs> so my homie works for Lone Star Live, <laughs> and all, he, all a lot of their posts are Cowboys. So I'm like, man, I know my audience on this one. Right, I'm right. Fucking, let's put on my Cowboy jersey. <laughs> Lamb's good, man. Unfortunately, just hope he doesn't go to Kansas. But I mean, Kansas is taking over. I just, I'm just there for. Sundays, man. I just want to see how far we can shoot the shit. We're not gonna mm-hmm. go anywhere, bro. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the Chiefs and the 49ers for a while, and it's just gonna, be, and it's cool, whatever. I mean, I don't like it. I'm not. Yeah. I'm oppressed. I'm pissed, but it is what it is, bro. So, so, so the Cowboys didn't do a whole lot in the the free agency. That's ridiculous, bro. I'm happy you got Ezekiel, bro. So I did go see a game last year or right. this last season. It was the game we played the Patriots, mm-hmm. and I just saw Ezekiel all sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like fucking depressed. So I'm glad he came back. Yeah, we didn't do much because we paid fucking. How much do we pay Dak? A lot, bro. We can't afford anyone. Who are we going to get? We're, we're trying to get the custodian, dude. They're probably throwing passes <laughs> at that motherfucker trying to see if he could play. Like anyone that wants $100,000 a year that's willing to take a concussion. What's up? Have, have, yeah. you seen their, have you seen their schedule this year? Are you liking it? or? I don't even look, bro, because you know what? It, I just know it's rough. Right? It, 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 I can't remember exactly, but it looks a little bit rough. But even the Eagles have a rough schedule, man. And it seems like we're playing all the harder teams. The downfall of the Eagles was way worse than the Cowboys. It was bad. It was terrible. Well, I mean, I don't know. They both got first round out, but never mind. No, it was the same. It was terrible, bro. Uh, it was just nice that they all the people were talking shit in the next week or the next day. I remember we were like, fuck you. Mm, no, dude. Uh, so, so their schedule looks pretty hard this year. Um, Who's your team? Eagles. Oh, I love the Eagles. I, I'm, I'm a diehard Eagles fan, bro. And <laughs> oh, you're nice. You didn't talk shit, dude. Thank you. No, I, I only talk shit when people talk shit first, bro. Ah, I'm sorry, man. No, no, you're, I you're, love the Eagles. The downfall fucking, was crazy, bro. <laughs> dude, it fucking pissed me off, bro. But it, it is what it is, man. I mean, I, you know what, man? As long as it's not the Kansas City Chiefs winning, I'm okay with it, bro. At this point, uh, I, I'm thinking we'll do okay. I'm thinking we'll the Eagles. Not we. I'm, I'm not playing for the team, but I think they'll win at least eleven games on this schedule. You have a second team? Nah. I, I don't like I, the Jets, dude. I don't believe in second teams, bro. I can't. I like the Jets because of Mark Sanchez. And okay. I just haven't gotten over it. Well, Mark Sanchez played for the Eagles, too. Uh, I don't like the Eagles, bro. <laughs> he started off. And then, oh, but, USC. You like USC, so it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Mark Sanchez. Mark Sancho. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was cool to watch, man. It was like... But... But I also like the Texans. I like mm-hmm. CJ Stroud. I love watching. Um, man, who else do I like? I like watching. I like watching Kansas City play. I like. I like watching all of it though. I love mm-hmm. Oh, it. same here. The Steelers are going to be interesting to watch because they got like all these QBs. They're going to. I mean, and then my brother-in-law is like a big um, Steelers fan, mm-hmm. so we're always like, you know, just always watching them. No, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till till Monday or Tuesday get on YouTube and watch all the highlights after every every Sunday, whatever. But um, I, I I don't have second favorite teams. But if I've got you ever a... watch the games though, yeah yeah yeah, I'll, okay. I'll watch as many as Scary I can. Me, bro, you just suddenly look at highlights. Like, no no no, that's like Spark Notes, bro. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch as much as I can for sure. Um, definitely as much as I hate them, I'll, I'll, I'll watch the Cowboys game just to talk shit in case people talk shit on me first. But um, again, no second favorite teams. But if if I've got like like back in the day, one of my buddies was a was a Titans fan. So I would root for the Titans just on his behalf because it's my homeboy. You know, I had a friend that was a Chargers fan. Bro, I love Joe Burrows. I want to buy his fucking jersey. I don't like the... But I love Joe Burrows. I love him. Favorite quarterback. I, I think that's going to be one of our harder games this year. But he's injury prone too, so you never know. He, he plays better injured. Nah, he had a tough season last year. He's mm-hmm. going to come back strong. I feel like... But he doesn't... He always plays better in the playoffs. He's like a Jamal. Mm-hmm. He's like that dude from the Nuggets, dude. Mm-hmm. They're... <laughs> the point guard. I want to. I don't say his name, so I'm like, man, but the guy's name. Jamal Murray. I hate that dude. Yeah. He's so good, man. Always oh, playoffs just tears us up, dude. I'm just like, bro. <laughs> but you know, I like the. I, I do like the Mavericks. I like Kyrie and and uh, I do. I love the Spurs. I, I'm a Lakers fan, but I do. Mm-hmm. I do love the Spurs because of Wemby. I'm a big mm-hmm. Wemby fan. I love Wemby. He's dope. Yeah, ba- basketball. I haven't watched as much as I used to. Uh, I mean, we grew up in the '90s, so it's clearly. 90% of uh, NBA fans were Bulls fans, you know, and even though I don't watch basketball anymore, I, watch, I still consider myself a Bulls fan. Do you watch, watch, okay, watch the series between the Nuggets and the Timberwolves right now. It's right. Going to get, that's a good one, dude. You're going to see Anthony Edwards play, you're going to see Joe, I mean, there's some good players right now. Joker, like, too. Yeah, Joker, I can't say his name either. Joker. Yeah, 
Dude, yeah. I mean, I, I love LeBron, dude. I mean, I'm a Laker fan, but it's, it's this season was tough for sure. We sucked. LeBron or Jordan? Oh, Jordan. For sure. Yeah, you can't. You, that fool, everyone was wearing pants up their ass and so Jordan came. Mm-hmm. It's like, made it a little. He changed it for sure. No, I mean, uh, Jordan was, he's going to, yeah, Jordan did on his own. He wasn't changing, he wasn't, I, don't, I feel like LeBron's just so, he's so good and he's, his stats are just going up, but mm-hmm. um, Jordan didn't have that pressure to beat stats or mm-hmm. beat the record. He wasn't thinking about records. He didn't even know, what, he was just setting the pace. He was setting the tone. He was, he was, he made basketball more valuable than it was when he got in, and like the the shoe deals. He's the first one, bro. LeBron. He got. He makes a quarter of a billion dollars every year. He has a better deal than LeBron's mm-hmm. billion dollar lifetime deal. He makes that shit in four or five years. Mm-hmm. LeBron, dude, Jordan's top notch, top tier businessman. Just everyone hates him, but he. Yeah, you see, everyone's seen the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that's a badass documentary. I mean. It was one sided, and then you know I do love Pippin though too. I mean it's fucking it's just weird, man. You see all these elites and they all fucking hate each other. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. They're not just artists that hate each other. No, yeah, Pippin for sure was the best right hand man he could have asked for. I just for, felt you know? bad for him. Robin should have got paid more. He has contract mm-hmm. man, but it is what it is, right? There was a contract error, right, or something? No, he just wanted he wanted he got a long contract, and so he signed it for a long time because he wanted mm-hmm. that stability. But mm-hmm. then during that time contracts started blowing up and so he was just tied into mm-hmm. it and they never they yeah. never renegotiated poor guy man <sighs> and, and then jordan's uh son marcus uh yeah with, with his but i felt like i felt like that was just it just looked bad it was just bad it looked terrible, i don't want to i can't even oh dude poor i just kind of pippin man makes me like him even more <laughs> it's just tough I mean we've all kind of been there we all know how it is to have that one person we like and we're all gone Ugh, it's tough The Last Dance that was great I think they're supposed to make a sequel to it is what I heard I think it was going to be Robin's story I, I think it was okay. I, I think that's what I heard somewhere, so, read somewhere. Way, I know they made one with um, Luke Longley in Australia <laughs> that never came out did you see that? no <laughs> there's like a whole part of Luke Longley I remember like, Luke Longley for sure and he's, he's, he's big, on big old white boy yeah, they have the heat got cut out, bro. What's up with that? I yeah, there's a um yeah okay. No, but but football's more my thing. Uh, Eagles is my 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 team. If I, if I go with basketball, I'll still be a Bulls fan forever. Oh, okay. Uh, baseball, I like baseball. Not so much on TV in person. So obviously, I love the Chihuahuas. I like going whenever we get a chance to go. But um, soccer, soccer's blowing up. Messi brought so, a lot to the... So, so soccer, I used to watch soccer a lot with my, my buddies I used to live with when I was uh, living in Phoenix back in the day. Um, we'd be watching the Chivas games, I think is what we'd watch, for sure. And then the World Cup, uh, I used to be a, a, a Rooney fan, England. What was he, Manchester United or something? I can't remember. I know I got his jersey somewhere. I hate soccer. No, soccer soccer's <laughs> no, cool. Than, I like soccer school. That's it. I, I I think with soccer, uh, with soccer, what I like was the vibe. Just going to watch the game at a bar with your buddies was pretty cool too. Nah, I need to get into it, man. I do watch the World Cup, but I'm not as yeah. Mm-hmm. I go for the US. I don't know, man. I need to get. I mean, I might have to tap into my soccer more. Yeah, I'm into it because my buddies, like I said, more than anything. But for sure, I enjoyed it more than more than baseball, more than basketball. Are you into uh, the WNBA, bro? That's where you're slacking, man. Dude. <sighs> They just got, they had to start moving games to bigger arenas this last week. Just because, mm-hmm. and then they finally got their own charter planes. So good to see, as, as a girl dad, mm-hmm. it's like, hell yeah, bro. Are they finally getting paid or is it just Caitlin Clark um, getting paid? Caitlin Clark, they got Brink on a New Balance deal. Angel mm-hmm. Reese got a deal with Reebok. Uh, Asia Watson, or Wilson, sorry. She's a the all, MVP, she works, she, Las Vegas Aces. She's... She has a statue. She's getting her shoe next year, but they already announced that she's got a deal. This they never. This this is all new. Yeah, I haven't ever sat down for for an, uh, a game at all. Um, I I watched more March Madness women's basketball than right. I did men's this year. Well, I mean, it's good that you're promoting it, you know, because I've never seen anybody this excited to ever promote it, you know. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> neat. Like like maybe I'll, the WNBA. May, may, maybe I'll give it a chance here sometime soon. But honestly, the only Watch time I, the, the the only time I've ever really seen it is is I'll be at the gym on the treadmill. They got the TVs up there, right? And they'll have games playing Dude. every so often. And Juju Watson's dope. She's mm-hmm. she's gonna she's a she's a star. She's from UCL. You should, you should watch her play. You'll, you'll probably get into it, man. Mm. You'll, be, you'll be traumatized with her, her bun. Like and and she, she plays with who? 
UCLA. UCLA. But no, for the WNBA, oh. Chicago Sky or is kind of like the team with the, they got the two first uh, rounders. Mm-hmm. They got um, the girl that just won the championship, Camila. Mm-hmm. She's from Brazil. Oh, yeah, and then they got Angel Reese, who's my favorite college player. She won the championship with uh, LSU, Louisiana mm-hmm. State, and she does this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's dope. And then you're, you said you're really, you're really into boxing as well. I love boxing. I, I I'm all into like yeah. Yesterday we were talking about mm-hmm. the Tyson Fury O sick mm-hmm. fight, sick fight. We both caught it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but I do follow Garcia. I think he's fun to watch. Um, I like Loma is cool. I you know I like to see him and Haney fight again. I do. I like I like Pitbull Cruz. Mm-hmm. He's fun to watch. Yeah, Terence Crawford's still my favorite because he's just pound for pound. In Inoue, Inoue from Japan, this phenomenal undefeated artist, uh, artist, uh, boxing artist, mm-hmm. sick fighter, dude. They they wanted him to gain up weight and fight Gervonta Davis, but I don't think he should. He's too. He's too. He should just stay low, cause um. But he yeah, Gervonta Davis is gonna fight Frank Martin. Tyson's gonna fight. I was gonna ask you about oh. that. One. How, how do you feel about that one, man? It's man. Mike Tyson's getting old, man. Let's. He's going to get the bag this one last time. Make him some money, dude. Get that Netflix deal. Make a documentary out of it. He, then... He's going to make the bag, but do you think he'll get the win? I... Mike Tyson? Um, nah. Unless it's a short... Ah, dude, no, because I think... I think youth is going to play a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's going to have power. I think it's going to... I do want him to win. Don't get me so wrong. So do I. So do I. But I, I don't think... Uh, I'm, I think the Paul and Tyson Fury 2 fight is going to be a better fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do. No, nah, you know what? Mike, I don't know. You never know. Because Mike Tyson's a powerhouse. The videos of him. Yeah, him, him practicing, he, he still has it. Obviously, he's lost a little a little bit of speed. But even then, how he's long? still faster than a bunch of other how boxers. Long is it gonna, how, I guess it's going to be interesting to see how long. the late. It's going to be shorter rounds. It's going to be 10 rounds. It's going to be a... Was it two-minute rounds? I think it's two-minute rounds. Yeah, I think so. 10 rounds or some shit. Like, I don't know. It's not going to be... It's going to be all right. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. I, I, I'm hoping he takes the win. I'm hoping, I don't for sure, just for the nostalgia of it. But if 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 Paul wins, what does he get out of this, bro? He's beating money. Well, besides the money though, but 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 is there any glory in beating up Mike Tyson at 57 years old, or however the fuck old he is? Yeah. Whereas if, if, if <laughs> it's Mike if, Tyson, dude, yeah, you just want to bro, party bro. with the master. Nah, it's just one way to. I think it's just dude, Mike Tyson's like. He's the one that got me into boxing. So yeah, for yeah, me, for I sure. love him. I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's all good. I think it's good for the sport. I think people are... That's a fight, that's a fight people want to see. And, and that's what we all want to know. Does Mike Tyson still have it? But what, what if he does kick his ass? This is going to be a whole different conversation. Exactly. And th- that's why I'd rather have that outcome, man. And, and but that's the thing. Like, you don't know until you try it. And so I rather... Like, there's this dude, Turkey, Turkish Ali or something. And he's bringing... He's from um, Saudi Arabia. He's, he's the one bringing all these big fights. And he wants Canelo. I mean, he anyway. Um, yeah, he's cool too. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But yeah, there's just mm-hmm. so many. There's just so much in the boxing world right now, dude. Um, Pacquiao promoting everyone, dude. Uh, I like De La Hoya. I mean, you got Eddie Hearn. There's just so many big names now that are promoting, dude. De La Hoya, saca la bolsita. Dude, I love De La Hoya, bro. I'm like low key, dude. De La Hoya for president. I mean, he's he's a uh, he's he's. Yeah, I, 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 like one of my all time favorites. I do remember. I, I do remember loving his fights when I was into boxing when I was younger. Uh, one of my favorite fights of his was whenever he fought uh, Fernando Vargas. Oh, because that dude was just talking shit. He was talking so he much. Shit. the same way, dude. We're, we're gonna see who the real Mexican is, and he got his ass cold by the He's still in the boxing world, actually. Right. He's training his son, and he's still talking shit, bro. <laughs> he's still like he's talking shit about Garcia now. He's calling him like a you know. And look at how look at how De La Hoya left him. His Definitely. face all swollen. He looked like he had a football built into his forehead. Bro, De La Hoya had. Took all the demons out on him, bro. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I love De La Hoya. That fool's jab. It'd be good to see him. In, uh, I'd like to see him and Canelo fight. It won't happen. It, but it, it'll like never happen, but that'd be pretty neat. Dude, I think it's just... That dude's a trip, man. He's been taking advantage of his following, and he's been right. doing some... Rel- I think he's starting to see, like, there's power in views that's doing stupid shit. People right. don't care. They want to talk shit about you, but then... It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? And that's... It's... it's uh, yeah, man. Everyone's just different. Everyone's trying to make themselves. Uh, everything's an, an an image in a weird way too, man. Mm-hmm. Who knows what's real, what isn't? But like Diddy, man, what the heck, dude? That's crazy shit. Bro. I mean, he did an apology, and I haven't seen it, but I'm just like, I didn't even know he apologized, but 
just like geez. it's it's very convenient that it comes out after that video surfaces of him. Well, I think when the FBI invaded his ra- raided, he had all this stuff on his files. So it's just all this information that he bought and stored, and then they sold it to CNN, bro. Because he's coming out saying like he's being misjudged and it's a black man and against the world and all these different narratives that he was playing. Um, you know, apparently he paid fifty thousand dollars for that video and then it got leaked. But that's just that video is worth more than fifty thousand at that time. Well, now. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just like he needed to be humbled, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's just the universe taking care of itself, you know. It's like the it's like the It all comes back to you at some point. Let's watch Avatar, bro. <laughs> <laughs> watch both of them. They're both great, man. My boy loves them too. Just dude, but Diddy, that's that's crazy, man. It's, I, it's... you know, I just like I don't know. It's it's the beginning, dude. So they're saying Jay Z, they're saying all this stuff. Who knows, bro? Who knows? And all you can look back and say is Cat Williams was right. Bro, that fool turned down 50 mil. <laughs> but there is different... Man, I, I watch uh, time, Law, Law and Time or some Law, dude. It's like this dude. I can't think of the right... I'm, I'm subscribed to it. But he does... Uh, there's different like people that were hired to hook up with him and them. and It's just weird stuff, dude. These parties are going to come out. No one, like Everyone got really quiet. Even um, the guy that came out in the lawsuit with that singer, what's his name? The actor dude. He was in a. He was in radio. Oh, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, that dude um, is even like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And like they were like hanging out, bro, on video. And he's like, <laughs> I don't know about this. He knows, man. There's something, dude. That's bad. It's gonna be bad. And I'm just like. Clive Davis, all these motherfuckers are quiet. I don't know what's going to come out. All these fools that were all about Diddy. He's going to start acting like radio dude. Usher, <laughs> Justin Bieber. All yeah, that. I, mean, I don't know what the hell. That fool looks traumatized. That fool's just coming out on um, Instagram crying all the time. I'm just like, what the hell? Oh, Justin Bieber, yeah. Bro, I'm just like, and then they have like the old video. I'm just like, dude, what? What but but you, you gotta think with that fucker with Bieber he's he's been famous for so long bro he, I, I, I think that takes away from your life as well bro because he he's that in was the all limelight. awkward imagine all these people coming out and he's just like what the hell he you, sold his music rights for two hundred million recently you, you live in a world of yes man you're a kid that's got all this money and and nobody tells you no it's it's gonna it's gonna fuck with you bro that takes away all the trials and tribulations that anybody that's normal would deal with man that shapes you into the person that you ultimately become Michael Jackson bro. Dude was so talented, but so weird. Jesus. So fucking I messed was, up. I was super obsessed with that dude after he passed away. I went to Barnes and Noble, read a whole book about him, like about oh, what the hell. Yeah, I was into Nancy Grace at that time. Nancy I don't watch Grace. much show. I don't watch like my favorite thing is watching YouTube and reality crime stuff. That's what I watch too, bro. Did you ever get into uh, Song Discovery Plus during the pandemic? I got into a show called uh, Fear Thy Neighbor. Okay. Did you ever watch that? True stories about neighbors that fight with each other to the point where they kill no, each other. Or but my neighbor like currently doesn't like me. Wow. <laughs> because. Just be careful, bro. If you watch that show, people go nuts, bro. Bro, it's because my homie was, they were, just recently got divorced and mm-hmm. I was homies with the husband. And then that was just her. So she's always just like, I'm just like, yeah, she better not kill me. I don't want to see that shit. No, I'm good. Dude, it's, <laughs> if you're into crime crime stuff bro that show's amazing bro oh, what, what was cool because it, it, it's a bunch of seasons right uh, i think it's like seven or eight seasons in the first the first five seasons or so even the actors portraying the people they they, they hired people that look like the real people bro the last season or two they, it's like they stopped caring they look nothing like it's them, on netflix but, no it's on a discovery plus oh, okay uh fear thy neighbor that how much show does that them. how much does that cost <laughs> i think it's about 10 bucks Yes, bro. That's a, another that's subscription name. service, bro. Dang, bro. I, yeah, just to watch NFL, you have to have uh, everything. You have to have three different CBS, mm-hmm. ABC, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to have Dazone. Mm-hmm. And then you have to have all this other stuff, man. And then you got, now you got Prime Boxing with Amazon and then Amazon. Well, that's what I was using uh, Stream East for more than anything was to watch the football games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the foot, yeah, if you want to watch every game, I mm-hmm. guess, right? Yeah, I just, I found it recently, so I've just been watching boxing, but. I did have, I do have Spectrum, mm-hmm. so I have access to mostly everything on mm-hmm. my phone with, every, with, the, with that app or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works out. Yeah, sports, man. Yeah, I, again, it just, uh, it just, uh, not hit me by surprise, but it's, it's, it's not very many artists that'll 
talk about how much they love sports, bro. You know, no one else. Do, yeah, it, it's because you, 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 you can't. You can't be like in a. This. You can't be in a box as an artist, bro. You know, like it's like it's 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 bullshit, bro. Like if you're into sports and you're an artist, so what? You know, it's it's bad attitude to into it's, sports, dude. It's it's like my favorite thing to do when I'm like just downtime. On your downtime, yeah, just watch sports. Uh, not so much ESPN, mostly like just the actual boxing matches like I'll, I'll, I'll watch a bunch of De La Hoya fights still mm-hmm. I like watching Mayweather fight now more than I did before I, I, I appreciate the Conor McGregor fight mm-hmm. with Mayweather now more than I did at that time you know what I mean it's just mm-hmm. something about the moment the build of it you can still feel it it's just I don't know man so, so I, I respect Mayweather because he played the game better than anybody else for I sure I hate him along the way well, the, the, so that's, that's where I'm going so the reason I hate I hate him even though I respect him was because when I was really into boxing Ricky Haddon he was my favorite boxer, bro. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted Ricky Hatton to beat him, bro. But he got outboxed. Dude, De La Hoya beat him, and it went his way. Mm-hmm. Even his dad came out saying De La Hoya won. And I was just yeah. like, I was bummed for him. Because that came out looking like Fidel Castro. No. Like, not Fidel. Pancho Villa. Like, yeah. And I was just like, man, beat his ass. But <laughs> I, Mayweather's grown on me. I, I think he got locked up in Saudi Arabia recently, right? For not... I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. He's just... Yeah. He's there. He's what? still going to fight. I think he announced he's going to fight recently again. Oh, wow. Again, like, There's going to be a rematch of a fight that he had that was close before. I can't remember which one, but he just announced that he's going to fight on the 15th of this month, actually. So, that was still trying to make a buck, bro. So, he, got, he, has, he has the record, though, for the highest paid fight. $280 million against Conor McGregor, dude. That was the highest paid anyone's ever done. And that's from him. No, I I think uh, it'll be good for him to be in the limelight again because he'll just get Fifty Cent talking shit on him again. Fifty Cent, dude, Fifty Cent's busy with P, with P. Diddy right now, dude. I, don't, I, don't, I think he's he's got he's got he's got his daughter, he's got his son and his and his ex wife. Yep. Now in the whole thing, and it's like that fool's just he's got Stevie J. I don't know. Brutal but hilarious, bro. Bro, I mean, to, dude, Diddy's son coming out the diss track, bro. It's just like, oh my god. <laughs> What the hell's going on? Yeah, dude, I'm also into Fit Fam, and I do watch my TMZ. Yeah, it's bro. I'm, a, I'm an artist, but dude, I I got shit. I got dude, I yeah. You got I, your you got your vices, your guilty pleasures. Oh, dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You just you got this. Yeah, you gotta get something going. I I I play Marvel. Despite painting, I play Marvel Strike Force. Oh, right on. All the time. Yeah. All day, <laughs> years, level nine hundred ninety something. Oh shit! <laughs> Fuck, dude, bad. I play that shit too while I'm watching and drawing. Right. Dude, just and I'm on. I'm. Let me get. Let me mind you. I'm on sleeping meds. Right. And all kinds of shit, bro. And I'm still going. So it's pretty intense. Well, so sp- speaking of fit, fam, what's going on with El Paso, bro? All these car accidents. So, it's, it's actually. It's, I I kind of have to like. Choose how much I, I stay on that page. Yeah. And I, I try not to comment anymore because the past is really small. Yeah. And then I have like little memes set up for like, no one cares. Like, people <laughs> shit. So I'm like, yeah, you know, the past is just, yeah, it's, it's intense, bro. Um, I live right off Joe Battle. So if there's something that happens, I'm like, oh, let's check it down. Or in the morning, like my, that's like my, my wife and my daughter's like go-to. So we do get a lot of our information from there, for sure. You have to, bro. It's, it's the, it's the news source, bro. And then it's so big and popular. It's going to be like a million followers one day and just, they, dude, imagine running FitFam and not having to work and then just getting paid hundreds every day because people want you to promote them. And then it's like, it's become, it's, it's. Man, they got, I'm sure they file taxes on like, it's crazy I met the guy that runs it once cause, military uh, right yeah that's yeah. all I know I thought he was um, a but I know no I, I think he's yeah I can't remember but he's really into fitness he uh, was dating my my homeboy's baby mama so I, I met him at his boy's birthday party awkward just yeah for sure but uh, but uh, I remember they told me he's like oh that's the guy that runs fit I'm like alright cool like, I, don't, I don't think I really met him it was just he just he, drove he, off in his, he, no, he was pointed out. He just so. drove off in his Tesla Cybertruck. Like. But 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 dude, talk about how talk about how that blew up and Damn, everybody in El Paso goes to that site for everything, bro. They won't post you unless you pay them. So you know, yeah. so it's pretty cool. They haven't shared any of my shit, fuckers. Nah, but they do share when they when they you know when they, you lose a dog mm-hmm. and a cat. And that's uh, they're good for that shit. Yeah, they got some positive stuff on there too, for sure. <clears throat> but, yeah, like. But they've had cheaters on there that get caught. They've had the car uh, accidents, and I mean, it keeps us all in check, bro. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's police on the streets. I don't want to end up on Fit Fam, so I'm gonna 
Be on the straight and narrow. Oh, dude, it's, you know, it's it's just the, the city's growing. And then every year they still say, man, during we're still the safest city in the world. I'm like, what the hell's going on? The safest or second safest. Yeah, and then you have Juarez. I'm just like, oh, it doesn't add up, bro. And you got all these fucking little people. You got people, you got bar bars over a fence mm-hmm. and shit. It doesn't feel safe. It's very militarized. And it's mm-hmm. like... And I feel like everyone, I feel like a lot of people in El Paso are always on the fence of just, we always have, we're always fighters, man. We're always fighting against something or there's always something happening here. There's always like a, so it's just, it's just trippy, bro. But we, El, Sp- El Paso is so special because we're so close to Mexico. So if we need our, that veterinarian, dentist or penicillin care, mm-hmm. we're really bad we can go there. Mm-hmm. Or we have our summon park area. If, if if you're suffering, need medicinal purposes, mm-hmm. you can go there. Mm-hmm. And we also have... El Paso, which is dope. You're, you have Texas. You're Texan, bro. Mm-hmm. Texas. And then you have Wise. And you got... I already said that. Yeah, but... but yeah, anyway. But yeah. yeah. Some dude, part, but dope. I think El Paso's finally catching up. So, so like, like, like we would talk about music with Adrian or with, with other friends, how for us being a border town, I think we're finally getting to where we need to be as far as culture goes, bro. Because I think about 20, 25 years ago, I'm 43 years old, with, with music and everything, it seemed like it was very, very much... Uh, Culture was here for sure, you know, but I think it's a little bit more prominent now all these years later than it used to be, bro. Really. Yeah. Um, Especially with art. The Edgars are great for the community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're great for the culture now. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's been cool. I think overall, I forgot what we were talking about. But... Just just the culture in El Paso is a lot oh, more prominent El Paso's now. Oh, than... El Paso is dope. It's growing. I'm, I'm curious to see how the Northeast grows with, um, I don't know, people were kind of bummed out that, um, what's his name? Uh, Zuckerberg bought a bunch of land out in the northeast. Oh, did he? Yeah, he's gonna do a. He's gonna do a. Fat, he's gonna do a. They're gonna do a big mega, meta thing. Oh, okay. Um, and I know they they got a, approved for a few city things out there. So it, oh, I'm curious to see how the new York, uh, the new northeast is. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot of growth. It is, you know, and it's it. I think with Fort Bliss there, we have like so much just sources of. It's crazy, bro. We have, we have, yeah. We're living in a cool city, man. I love El Paso. I, the only second city, I, if I had to move from El Paso, would probably be like San Antonio. Right. And if not there, Las Cruces. Mm-hmm. Those three. I like. I love New Mexico. I actually, actually, we mind living in New Mexico too. I I talk about it all the time, but I haven't really wanted to leave yet. Just yeah. I, I don't. I don't want to leave El Paso, bro. I mean, with work, I've got opportunities to live elsewhere, but it's like, no, I love El Paso too much, bro. You try, yeah, you drive. I'm not afraid of leaving El Paso at all. Like, like I love Austin. I would never live there though, but I love Austin, San Antonio also. Yeah. It's just too fucking humid, bro. San Antonio would be a. I just look at it as like, man, it'd be an easy way to hustle. You just paint on the river walk and just get. But I don't know for if sure. you have to pay for a permit. <laughs> Dude, I just went to San Antonio a couple months ago, and uh, my cousin Felicity showed me around town. And yeah, San Antonio's popping. It's popping. And bro. they got six. I know it's cool. They ha- the river walk is what they have. And I don't know how long it took to make that, but if El Paso to get a river walk, let's do it. Bro. If, if we had a river walk or if we had a, a theme park, anything like that here, that, that's all we need, but to make El Paso that much better, bro. Um, well, we have we got Trader's Village, bro. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna blow it up. Western Playland, bro. I still take. We go there like once a year. Um, it, it is pretty. Yeah, I went and I shouldn't have gone. Mm-hmm. I had the flu, <laughs> and um, I just wasn't. In the, I was just sitting like all fucking miserable. And when when, when paid, you, I don't know how much to get like with pass. And I'm just like, damn oh, hell, dude. And speaking of being sick, uh, um, <laughs> but I mean, not so much being sick, but whenever whenever COVID happened, did you, did you find yourself painting a lot more or about the same or? Yeah, I was at Lincoln. I was doing the shows. So um, they had city ordinances on everything, but they mm. didn't think about closing art galleries. And shit. Good. But there wasn't it. <laughs> so um, we had we had some cool shows, man. We had the Paradox Pyramid with Laura, and uh, we had the Pilo show, which was Futuro Dos. Which uh-huh. was cool installation. And then, um, so we actually did pretty well. We thrived during covid and it was a, it was good to see that, and then, yeah, it was it was trippy. It was cool. It was a. Uh, it was surreal. Though. It was scary though, and we did have to shut down a few like for a certain period. We mm-hmm. did decide to shut down, and we did have to be super clean. And we were everyone was all about. It was just I think mental health wise though mm-hmm. it was horrible. You know personally you just can't come back from that the same. 
I nope. think yeah, financially everything was, you know, we had to grind, but we figured out a way, thank God. God, bro. But it was also, you know, but people did buy more paintings. I felt like people thought it was the end of times. So, because everyone was just talking, to, you were just looked at the news and there was truckloads of people dying in morgues. So I think people were like, fucking buy more art. <laughs> They're like, it's fucking stressful. I need some shit to make me happy. You know? I, I think what scared me the most during that time, bro, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate I didn't see the stuff that Adrian saw, being, oh, being yeah. that he's in the medical field, but I remember what scared me the most was obviously fearing that it would affect my, my immediate family, my parents or my brothers yeah. or myself too, you know, but, but, but the biggest fear I had too was, besides that was, they were saying this, this was going to be the new normal for 10 years. I was like, can and we then, be on lockdown for fucking 10 years, bro? All that fear, bro. It, and honestly, like, you also have to go back to, like, how much of the conspiracy theories? Oh, my God. Don't even go there, right? Um, But also, like, the stress and what it does to you. And then having the stress of not getting sick. But then, like, you can't go out. And all the all the local businesses suffered so much. The bars, the hairstyles. That's the fucked up part, bro. Bro, my daughter was in karate, bro. She had to do online karate. We had someone <laughs> just teaching her. I was just like, she's like, fuck this shit. Dude. You know, I was just like, I'm sorry. Man. It was just so weird. But people were trying to survive. And it did bring us closer. But I couldn't touch you. I couldn't hug you. I couldn't fucking... It was like, how good is that? How healthy is that shit? Oh, I need my hugs, bro. Yeah, man, we were at all at shows, like, six feet apart, and then we got used to that shit. And, and then you just don't ask, and you just don't want to get sick, and you just, you just fucking, you just continue, though. I remember being at Walmart or Target, and somebody sneezes, you think it's the end of the world for you there, too? You can't sneeze, bro. You can't. It's like, you're gonna, you're fucking possessed, like, you're sick. No, it was, it was horrible, man. And, you know, what? I had a studio that I just painted at, thank God, and then I ended up getting a dog at that time. My first pet, and then now I have like fucking four or five, right? So having a pug and just having that, yeah. We opened right on February of 2020, dude. That was our grand opening of the of Galeria Lincoln. So what a trip. And like, I just quit, I had just quit my job, or yeah, I was working with the special needs kids, uh, nonverbal, mm -hmm. super tough though. It was like a lot of just. Was this for a school district? Or yeah, Socorro. Oh, right on. Yeah, I didn't like... I did it for three and a half years, man. It was tough. Which school? Um, man, I, it was uh, Horizon High. Mm. And then I did um, Ricardo Estrada. And then I... Metal. And mm. then I did uh, job coaching for a little bit. But then I ended up at El Dorado High mm. School. And then... Um, and then I was just, like, done. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, you know, I'm just going to quit. And then... It was cool. I had a gallery to clean up and sweep and have shows at. And so it kind of just had a good opening. It was the craziest, one of the craziest openings I've ever had. Um, front page of the El Paso Times and people just lined up. It was the first show where I saw Hal Marcus, some, um, you know, Gabriel. Um, I can't think of his last name, but Gabriel, he's the one that did all the, and Gaspar. But Gabriel is, uh, he's the one that did all the paintings downtown Lincoln. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lincoln area. I, mean, I can't think of his name, man. But um, so, so, so yeah. G GC used to have a Hal Marcus's art on the credit cards or the debit cards, bro. When's the first light gonna put your artwork on theirs, man? That'd be that'd be good. Bro. bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, for sure. No, I man. told him to already, dude. I even that'd, told him put him on, put me on a fucking commercial, bro. I'll fucking. <laughs> that'd be great to have your artwork on a, on a debit card, bro. Shh, fuck yeah, dude. But nah, I mean, we'll get there, dude. In due time, bro, it'll happen. It'll happen. That's my mm -hmm. dream. Manifest it. My bro. dream, bro. Be on a oh, debit yeah, card. <laughs> see my name. Think, think money when you see my fucking robot. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, man. Living the dream. Trading paintings for fucking gas at gas stations. <laughs> Being on a debit would be a fucking nice. I couldn't even get money out of a debit at a certain time. Now I'm fucking on a fucking debit card. What the hell? Hey, and and before we were start uh, before we started uh, recording, you talked about people that gave you a. Uh, uh, the opportunity to paint out their spaces. Um, so Buddy's Beer Barn, you, you were homeboys with them? Yeah, yeah. So Jonathan mm -hmm. plays a huge part into, um, man, the story, actually. If, there's an article that came out yesterday, and he, he comes out a little bit, but renewing that friendship of, mm -hmm. you know, him, you know, he was the landlord uh, most of the places I was at, and then Buddy's was a different 
different owner. It was Buddy, right? And then we had Justin, and Summer, and Kurt, and then we had like the group with Paul, and just a, a they had a tight knit group, right? Working in the back scenes. Um, I painted Socialized Food Truck, and um, and then we just had a lot in common. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I was just there painting, and they were just they were super cool. They were just so, and then they I I was at Casa Ortiz when this dude Brian took over the main lease and we would have to kind of rent through him and he wanted to turn this one to a haunted house mm-hmm. right so it was like how the hell how are we going to paint at a haunted house you know and that's what he wanted to do so he started doing it and then I just kind of was I remembered buddies I remember being there for a few type, like a few days of paint and they were cool and I asked them if they had an extra spot somewhere and then they had that where you painted mm-hmm. uh, where you did your music video yeah, yeah. Um, they had that that building that had was a clothing store that got rained on and flooded and just never became anything, right? And so they were like, "You want to go in there?" Because at first they had to sit down with me and they're like, "All right, so what do you want to do here?" And then I, they kind of asked you. They asked me for like, right, like, what, what have you been up to? I showed them my like my LinkedIn and mm-hmm. all that. So I realized like there was a purpose behind all that, right? And it brought me here. So this is the right path to be on. And then we all kind of just sat down, smoked some weed, <laughs> and we talked about everything we talked about we shot the shitty we just really um got to know each other and it was like he gave me a hug and a kiss and then they took me into the space i was at like this is your spot and does everyone vote him in and they all voted me in type shit mm-hmm. and it was like so weird bro i was just like <laughs> what the fuck and then i didn't even, i wasn't even sure what i was getting myself into but before i knew it they're already helping me get out of casa or these and they had a fucking like, moving truck ready for me to go take i was just like whoa what a trip, you know what I mean? And then, um, yeah, that's just kind of how that. That's trip. neat, man. Yeah. So you had them, and who else has helped you out? Oh um, yeah, John. Yeah. So every so when I started painting, um, and I started like there was this place called Loftlight Studio. It was on El yeah. Paso Street, and it was like just my favorite place to go. That was like, man, we made money, bro. Like you know, people would go and buy artwork. And it was a cool crowd, a mixture of people, eclectic group of lawyers, and just different people artist and and uh, that was really like where I met Tino and that's where I met Silver because um there wasn't many artists ever right and so I was kind of like how do I get into the art scene and that was like the thing that was happening and um and so I I started off painting on these metal boards because I couldn't so I, I wanted to pay my mom something for Mother's Day and Jonathan um his family does industrial recycling so they have scraps of all kinds of stuff and I mean, like filled up with, like, like the airplane. Mm-hmm. They gave, they put on the in Lincoln on my birthday, mm-hmm. and they, yeah, the, like, oh, he just has access to certain things that a lot of people wear, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I painted on light cover fixtures, and I painted on these metal boards, like hundreds of them. That's how I started, mm-hmm. and it was all Jonathan. Jonathan was always like, he's been my, he's my best man in my wedding, but he was also. Um, yeah, just my longest childhood friend over 31 years. So he's always helped me out. He's been telling me to be in art galleries in Silver City since I was in third grade. So it's been a trip. Um, mm-hmm. So he's always believed <clears throat> and he's always bought pieces and stuff. So it's been cool. And then uh, the, the place where I'm having my studio at, the show, now he owns that building. So um, it was kind of like I hadn't asked him for a favor in a few years. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, hey, man, can I have a show? And he's like, yeah. Of course, I'm fucking happy all the time. Like, and you've got your show up. Uh, we, we have the show now. It's we hadn't back. mentioned it May yet. 30th. It's my dad's birthday. He's going to turn 70 some. Someone's just like, you know, we're going to celebrate your birthday my way. And you're calling it the happiness I was left with? Diego Robot's yeah. solo exhibition? Some sh- yeah. It sounded better when you said it. <laughs> so I'm not going to say it. But yeah, it was, it's just the full circle ride. Starting in Lincoln on this like, And then kind of just being there again and thinking of where I'm at now when I was at the gallery and looking at it through the windows of construction mm-hmm. taken over by the people making the freeway always busy always trucks in and out and I'm just like well that's a huge space but mm-hmm. I've never been in there and then um now being able to like really just take over the whole top floor for of like a night or two of just my artwork and it had to right. be quick because he's, he's ready to like rent that out he wants mm-hmm. to rent it out fast so it's like it's got to be like this month I'm like all right last Thursday May he's like done and that was it but it was like, all right. But he was stealing the floors. He's doing some stuff. So I had some time. Mm-hmm. 
It yeah, worked out, man. And that show you said it was May 30th, and it's, it's starting at 7 p.m. to 12.30 uh, a.m., just past midnight. Yeah, and then um, mm-hmm. June 1st, I'll have a, it'll be open as well. I haven't awesome. announced it yet, but... Oh, that's the same address then? Yeah, 3900 okay. Rosa, right next to Old Sheepdog. Um, and we're also trying to just help Old Sheepdog out. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to just support the local community. Like, dude, he's been there since I was there the first time. And, you know, you talk to Gus, and then you, you do feel... Like you know him, like you've known him your whole life. Just like one conversation with him, and I think Dude, really, I, I gotta get him on here then. Yes, yeah. He, he, Maybe he could hook me up with that. Yeah, yeah. Just old, uh, message old sheep dog. Yeah. Just be like, yo, I need to talk to Gus. I need to get you on this podcast. Hell yeah, man. And uh, I know he's all about just. Uh, I've seen a couple shows there, so. Yeah, he's cool. He's a cool dude, and he's 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 grinding it out, man. He's he's in the hustle. So, um, there's a bunch of people just in that hustle, that struggle. It's some mm-hmm. people have more shit to pay for than others Some mm-hmm. people have, and it's just it's hard it's hard bro so um so if i could help them out with a good weekend or two help them fucking get like a good month or two in that'd be dope. that's just it bro i mean you guys are, are scratching each other's back yeah and then dead beach is a powerhouse mm-hmm. and they're uh, they're right there too so i mean that area has so much potential you have chuko you have the park i just don't know how it how easy it is to have events at the park because there's um there's ordinances and stuff and, stuff and then there's a committee and then it's just like a perfect place to get together but it's like mm-hmm. i think there needs to be an easier way for people to have access to but then if i guess if they do that then everyone's gonna want to be at mm-hmm. the park bro you know how many people want to just have be at the park meet mm-hmm. at the park have a fucking cook it out the park and mm-hmm. shit so i i can see where it's like it can be a little confusing but yeah i mean i know there's different councils and blah 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 but jvb's is actually opening up their second coffee shop there but it's going to be like a higher end um wine liquor Mm -hmm. and it's right in the same building i'll have my art show at and so you'll see some of that construction um and it's it's just it's a really dope spot man it's all local vibes it's all really just ecosystem friendly for local people and you know hopefully artists and people have a spot to pop up i think i think think without with all this growth it'll be on the up and up for for you and other artists for sure i imagine yeah and there's and there's like and there's people um that are doing it, man. But Chad, man, I want to thank you for coming over, man. I, I appreciate you. No, I think we got to keep it going, bro. Oh, we can't keep it nah, going. I, I got it's Sunday, bro. We got to. I got to go watch sports. Yeah. I got to go watch my highlights now, man. I got to yeah, jump gonna... into the Matrix, bro. It's going off. I am gonna take my boy my Marvel Strike Force right on top, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I've got my boy wanting to go watch the new uh, Planet of the Apes movie. Oh, dude, my wife's been asking me to take her, man. It, it, it looks like it's gonna be pretty neat. It's uh, gonna be good. But yeah, dude. Uh, Thank you for coming over. Uh, right, great man. guest, bro. Uh, and I am going to hit you up again later for another music video, bro. We've got some more music in the works. And I, I would I would want to try to keep some of the theme yeah, man. Uh, constantly active. Have your artwork in the background still here and there. And Even if you're like in a, doing like a weird scene in the house and you just need artwork in the pop, though, I'll, I'll fill it up. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, Hell yeah bro. We'll make it work. That's a cool, I've been focusing. Yeah. All right. I need to stop. No, no, okay. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can keep on going. No, I'm good. I'm good. But, dude. Okay, we're good. Diego, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming. Got Thank nothing but love me, for you, brother. Hell yeah, man. Thank and, you. Uh, and we'll see you around, brother. Yeah, see you. See you around. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for listening. Ooh. This has been the Long Story Longer podcast with Renee Rodriguez and today's guest, Diego Sebastian Martinez, yeah. also known as Diego Robot. Peace out. Peace out. Sorry, crap.